Maxine, and I am a teaching artist with Caribbean Cultural Center African Diaspora Institute, which is located in the Harlem section of New York City. Caribbean Cultural Center partners with many different community organizations and schools throughout New York City to offer students like you an education in the arts of the African diaspora, everything from storytelling to theater and dance. In this series, we're going to be learning different Haitian folkloric dances from the island of Haiti, which is in the Caribbean, right next to the Dominican Republic. We're going to be learning dances called Ibo, Nago, Yandalu, and Congo. These dances have existed for hundreds of years, dating back to the time of the transatlantic slave trade, over 400 years ago. During that time, many Africans were forced into slavery by European colonizers in many different countries, including Haiti. When the slaves landed in Haiti specifically, they brought with them their own cultural traditions, but created new forms of dance and music on the island, which created the folkloric traditions of Haiti that we know today, and that have been passed on from generation to generation. The first dance we're going to learn in this series is called Ibo, which is spelled I-B-O, and again pronounced Ibo. The Ibo dance is named after the tribe that it comes from of the same name. The Ibo tribe were originally from Nigeria and were a tribe of warriors. So when you do the dance, you have to dance with energy, power, and strength to show the strength of a warrior. The Igbo tribe were crucial and important to the Haitian Revolution, which was a war that was fought between African slaves and their oppressors and colonizers, in which they fought for their freedom and independence, making Haiti the first free black republic in the Western Hemisphere when they won the war in 1804. So again, we want to make sure that we show the strength and power of a warrior in the dance to honor the warrior spirit of the Igbo. So what's also important to know about Haitian folkloric dance in general is that it is polyrhythmic. The word polyrhythm means many rhythms. So when you hear the music for Igbo, you're gonna hear three different drums playing three different rhythms to create one harmonious sound. And in the same way, when we do the dances, the body parts are going to perform different rhythms to create one whole, rhythm, whole movement together. So I will show the dance, the steps we're going to learn, breaking down by each rhythm that's performed by the body, and then we're going to perform with the music. So the first thing I'm going to show you involves the feet. I'm going to show you the feet first. The feet simply go right together, left together, right together, left together. Make sure your feet stay flat and that your knees are slightly bent when you perform the dance because again, Haitian folkloric dances have West African roots and those dances tend to be very grounded and close to the floor. So you wanna keep your knees slightly bent and your feet flat. So again, you're gonna go right together, left together, right together, left together. Your arms are gonna follow the same rhythm as your feet. So what you're gonna do is bring your hands together in fists. And when they open, when your feet step out, you're going to open your arms out to your side. You're going to go out and in, out and in, out and in, out and in. Notice my hands stay in fists the whole time, and I keep my arms at shoulder level. You don't want your arms to sink or bend like this because you want to show the strength of a warrior. So make sure your arms stay straight out to the side. Also, I'm going to show you sideways. Make sure that your arms don't go too far back because what you're doing is you're pretending you have chains holding you down and you're trying to break them off when you bring your hands out to the side, but you, the chains are still there, so you're not gonna swing your arms su su super far back. You're gonna make sure they stay out here, but strong at shoulder level, completely straight with the hands and fists. So again, with the feet, let's try four times starting to the right. You're gonna go out and in, out and in, out and in, out and in. Let's try with the music. Evo rhythm is a little fast, but I think you can handle it. movement. 
formed by the chest. So I'm going to show sideways so you can see what I'm talking about. The chest is going to go on a one count. It's going to go one, 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 one. So it, it basically bring the chest out and in. Notice I'm not making a super huge movement. I'm not going so far to the front and so far to the back. It's very small and subtle, but you can still make out what rhythm I'm doing with my chest. So it's again, it's one, 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 one. Now with the arms and feet, the way it's going to look is you're going to go one, two, three, and four. Notice my chest was moving at a faster rhythm than my arms and feet. Some people have tend to make the mistake of bringing the chest on the same rhythm as the arms and feet, but you don't want to do that. The arms and feet are going one, two, one, two, while the chest is going one, 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 one. I'll show sideways again so you can see what I'm talking about. Starting to the right, five, six, seven, and one, two, three, and four. One more time, I'm gonna face front while we do it. We're gonna to start to the right, practicing without music first, adding the chest. Five, six, seven, and one, two, three, and four. Good, let's try with music, adding the chest with the arms and feet. still facing front. There's no need to have to face sideways. I'm only doing it so you can see what's happening with my body. Now we're going to add the head, which is actually following the same rhythm as the chest. So I'm going to show you sideways again so you can see what's happening. Your head and chest are going to go one, 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 one. So basically as my chest comes out, the head comes up. When the chest goes in, my head goes down. Just like with the chest, the head motion is very subtle. What that means is that I'm not jerking my head back and down. I'm not making a huge movement. It is small and subtle. So you should not feel dizzy and you should not have any neck pain because if you do it properly. So again, it's gonna go one, 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 one. So adding with the arms and feet, the way it looks together, I'm gonna show you sideways so you can see what's happening. You're gonna go one, two, three, and four. Now facing front, I'm gonna show you again. Five, you can feel free to do it with me. Five, six, seven, and one, two, three, and four. Now in the combination that I'm gonna to lead to later, you're gonna actually do the step eight times. So let's try it eight times without stopping, starting to the right. Five, six, five, six, seven, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Good. Again, you should not feel dizzy or feel any neck pain if you keep your head nice and small and subtle. So let's try it eight times with the music to see it to, for practice. Starting to Seven, eight. 
Now I often tell students to keep the seat, keep the body, same arm, same leg, so that when you step with the right foot, the right arm comes up, left foot, left arm comes up. But if you find that you end up doing the opposite, for example, you might end up doing, starting with the right foot, left arm. If that happens, that's okay. There's no written rule that it has to be same arm, same foot, but I just do that to help students as they're learning the step. But if you end up doing opposites while you're doing the step, that's totally okay. The important thing is, is to keep your knees bent, walk in place, and have the arms switch in rhythm with the feet. So let's try it eight times. Five, six, seven, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, make sure your hands stay in fist. Let's try it one more time. Five, six, seven, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now remember that head and chest I mentioned earlier? That's gonna be happening with this step two. But first let's practice with music, just the arms and feet so you get used to that motion. Seven, eight. 
wanted to show you for our first video. There are actually many different steps that you can do in every single patient folkloric dance. And we're gonna, those are the first two I'm gonna show you for Evo. In the next video, I'm gonna show you another two movements for Evo. So keep practicing. Thank you.